Hello everyone. I am Pratik Jain. I am lead researcher in quantum computing and AI at Fractal Analytics. I lead the quantum computing team. Today in this session, we are going to talk about quantum, a little bit about introduction about quantum computing and its applications in molecular simulation and interrupt discovery area. This is the brief overview. First, we will talk about quantum computing and its uh, application areas and impact. Then, why quantum computing for molecular simulation life sciences? Then a little bit about nature's complexity. Then the conducted case studies, which is one is variational quantum eigen solvers, and with the other one is quantum GANs. So this is the famous quote uh, made by Richard Feynman in 1981 at the Physics of Computation Conference in MIT. And the quote says, nature isn't classical, damn it. And if you want to make a simulation of nature, you better make it quantum mechanical. And by golly, it's a wonderful problem because it doesn't look so easy. And this famous quote uh, kicked off a huge interest in quantum computing area. And from there onwards, uh, quantum computing exists. The idea of quantum computing existed before this, uh, before 1981 also. But uh, nobody was very uh, pursuing it with, uh, with much vigor. After this quote, many people got interested. Here we can see broadly, these are the main areas where quantum computing have a very huge impact and if you if you see it's uh, pretty much all the sciences and there is a lot of impact in computational space also very in search pattern matching finance biometrics so if you if, if we summarize that i mean almost all the applications all the areas in our uh, normal life will be impacted by quantum computing and why is that we will uh, have a glimpse of that uh, briefly so here you can see uh, a glimpse of what it actually the problem is. So this is called Leventhal's paradox. So what me does uh, what this means is, with every uh, atom or uh, electron added to a molecule, how the complexity increases. So if you see in the first diagram, first figure, so this is a caffeine at atom. It has got uh, it is a caffeine molecule and it has got 24 atoms in it. To simulate the molecule, we will need around 2 to the power 160 classical bits, which is like 10% of Earth's atoms. So uh, it is classically intractable. No current, count, uh, no current classical computer or supercomputer or a cluster can simulate this. Wherein for quantum computers, it will take only 160 qubits because of this uh, phenomena of superposition and entanglement. So, Right now, uh, IBM has a quantum computer of 127 qubits. In few months, they are going to release a quantum computer with 433 qubits, which means now these kind of small problems, which we are not able to at all simulate or solve on classical computers, can be solved on quantum computers very soon. And as you can see, again, another figure is penicillin at molecule. So it has just 41 atoms. So these are fairly small molecules in uh, nature because polypeptides are hundreds of uh, hundreds of peptides and each peptide is um, tens of uh, tens of twenties or fifties of atoms and so you can see the uh, comparison like for just uh, simulating penicillin we will need 2 to power 100 and 286 classical bits which is like it's approximately equal to the all the particles present in observable universe this number but whereas a quantum computer will need only 286 qubits so this is the revolutionary uh, idea behind and this is also the key reason wherein it will uh, impact most of the sciences areas also now we uh, now why we take a glimpse of why this is so complex to simulate classically or uh, to simulate anyways so for for any atom, there is a set of electrons, there is a set of protons, and neutrons present in the atom. So each of these electrons has a energy function, its uh, orientation, its uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, magnetic energy, or uh, electromagnetic function. So each electron, proton, neutron will have those uh, set of energies which will be interacting with each other, with each other and which will be uh, since all these particles are always in constant motion these energy states and these uh, interactions change and since with each particle there is so many energy uh, 
functions associated you can see even for three particle system there are so many uh, energy uh, functions that has to be considered and these all together are called as termed as a hamiltonian so a hamiltonian is a function set of all the energies all the different types of energies uh, combined together and their interactions so this is this will give you an idea how why it becomes so complex so for example for 41 atom if each atom contains uh, 10 particles so it becomes 410 particles and suppose each a uh, particle contains some 10 or 20 energy functions then it again becomes that big of a number and all of these uh, and all of these are different combinations means for two particles there could be four combinations but again if we gave three particles it became eight combinations so like that it increases the complexity of calculation and simulation of all the hamiltonian observables increases exponentially and wherein quantum computers would come because they can uh, simulate all of these things with lesser number of uh, processing uh, processing circuits or what you call qubits because they work in superposition this is again extension of the previous slide which says that the schrodinger equation cannot be solved so schrodinger equation is analogous to this uh, equation over here which means the uh, uh, energy state which uh, gives us the energy state or the um, position or the configuration of a, a system of uh, atoms or molecules so the schrodinger equation cannot be solved accurately when the number of particles exceeds about 10 no classical computer thing or that will ever exist can break this barrier because it is a catastrophe of dimensions like i said earlier there are so many observable so many energy functions and so many interactions to be uh, considered so this was uh, this quote was said by pines and moglen in 2000 so now we see how our qubits are mapped to the electronic structure or molecular structure so each electron will have uh, orbitals so it, so uh, each particle will have orbitals for example a uh, electron will have two orbitals one is spin up spin down so we say number of qubits equal to number of orbitals so for example one electron have two orbitals so two qubits will be used to denote that one electron similarly for protons neutrons or other uh, particles neutrons normally are not considered in the uh, equation because they are pretty dormant and for approximation purposes and to reduce the complexity normal simulations uh, neutrons are excluded so this particular mapping is called jordan wigner mapping each orbital is mapped onto one qubit a uh, qubit is denoted by ket0 i hope you understand what is ket0 and ket1 then unoccupied orbital uh, i mean ket0 denotes unoccupied orbital and ket1 denotes occupied orbital so as you know electrons protons they are always moving so they will be moving from one orbital to another orbital so when it is in a particular orbital it will be denoted by ket1 if it is not in one particular orbital it will be denoted by ket0 now if you see in the last line so this will give you the um, glimpse of how complex and how big a hilbert space could be hilbert space again the uh, set of observables and energy functions in the hamiltonian of the whole particle or atom system So if there are 40 uh, spins and there are 40 particles and each particle will have two spins so there are 2 to the power 40 combination and this is analogous to 10 to the power 12 so this is a huge number of combination of observables for just 40 particles and this turns out to be uh, roughly in terms of memory turns out to be 4 terabytes for single precision this is how this is how um, uh, complex uh, nature's problems are in the molecular simulations etc and how this is uh, what are the implications applications and impact of it we'll just come across that so this is a uh, brief overview of the key uh, use cases where in uh, in quantum chemistry where in quantum computers would be very handy so for example uh, climate change and protein folding for example in uh, regarding climate change there are uh, one example is nitrogen fixation so currently ammonia is produced for fertilizers all over the world and currently it is uh, produced using the haber bosch process it is a 100 year old process and it it 
takes a huge amount of energy uh, heat and pressure uh, all those things and it comes out that it uh, haber bosch process alone consumes 5% of the world's natural gas costing 11.4 billion dollars every year and this process uh, contributes to 5% of global carbon dioxide emission but there is a enzyme that exists in nature which is called microorganism uh, that can make this uh, ammonia very uh, on room temperature in ambient conditions so contaminants can help us understand how nitrogenic dust is and we can uh, change the nitrogen fixation uh, process and we can bring change to the climate similarly they, we can make uh, different new materials like different catalysts for uh, which can absorb more carbon dioxide or more carbon and this is uh, suggested by project x xprize.org by uh, elon musk then uh, in terms of drug discovery a new drug typically takes 10 to 15 years to progress from discovery to launch and it costs around 2 billion dollars and success rate is less than 10% from entry to launch and this is for each drug because since we are not able to simulate these molecules we have to do trials hit and test trials so there will be a set of uh, disease uh, suppose we one disease is targeted then there will be a set of uh, drug molecules which will be taken up for this disease and different combinations will be interacted and these reactions will be manually done into the laboratory and this will this process will go on for uh, roughly 10 12 years and so many 90% um, experiments would fail and because we are not able to simulate them on our computers we are doing this physically and that is the whole pain and quantum computers are supposed to be able to help here and protein folding is a subset of protein structure prediction and protein engineering and design then another use case could be room temperature superconductor this could be very revolutionary to make portable desktop like uh, quantum computers because current day quantum computers the biggest uh, challenge and biggest uh, structural part is the refrigeration chip is still very small so if we have room uh, room temperature superconductors that we don't need that big refrigerator then uh, there could be another um, application in yeah uh, in terms of quantum chemistry itself like better material design which could make help make better batteries with larger capacities and fast charging and there is a case study already done by ibm on this now we will come to the actual algorithm so this is one of the case study that we did and we use variational quantum eigen solver algorithms to simulate uh, drugs and simulate molecules and see how they interact and whether the interaction is stable or not and we did a comparison comparative study with the classical computer we did same experiment with the classical computer and we did the same experiment with the quantum computer and we will come to the result so what is a variational quantum eigen solver so if you see in the figure this is the circuit diagram of the actual vqe uh, algorithm in which what happens is the first a uh, step is to prepare the trial state where which means map the atoms map the configuration of atoms and electrons and protons onto the qubits like we discussed earlier with the jordner jordan wigner mapping then second uh, step is to measure the so in the first step we map uh, prepare the trial state we map the qubits then we uh, we make this circuit which is called ansatz and if you see this theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 are different rotation angles of the circuit these rotation angles will be adjusted and these will be changed according to the result suppose we get a result in step 2 uh, the result is not good then we will change the theta and in step 3 we will again uh, push back the new uh, theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 variables and their values and then we will evaluate again so this is how the whole circuit and the evaluation works so first step is to map the qubits and map the circuit second step is to measure the cost function of the whole circuit the cost function can be in various uh, forms right in this case it is, it will be eigen solver in step 3 we will use a classical optimizer to calculate the gradient like it then it will compare the cost function value to a base value and see how far it is and then it will give out the small changes to the angles that has to be made back to the circuit so in our case we use the stochastic gradient descent as the optimizer so that's uh, the brief uh, high level overview of qe if you want to go to technical details then i'll uh, recommend to refer to 
आइडन के स्केट और पेनी लैंड डॉक्यूमेंटेशन देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिटेल इन दो आई ब्रीफली टच बेस अपॉन द स्टडी दैट वी डिड फ्रॉम यूजिंग so what we did was uh, so this case study is done in ibm kiskit and penilen on amazon bracket so we took a, a hiv molecule and we took a very small part of the hiv molecule uh, which is a very very small part i mean it is not even one full molecule uh, we can show you here it is the smallest part of the hiv molecule we have taken here why we took very small because the quantum computers are very small right now we have access to only 5 7 qubits and with those we can simulate only these small molecules right now in future when we have bigger ones then we can possibly simulate whole hiv molecule so what we are trying to do here is so here h n h c h denotes the uh, n o uh, denotes the small uh, formaldehyde kind of a molecule uh, which is a very small sub part of uh, hiv and so in hiv what happens is uh, there is a drug form called entry retroviral so entry retroviral will be uh, another molecule which will go and attach itself to the hiv molecule and uh, it will uh, not allow the hiv molecule to replicate itself the function of replicating the virus will be gone by this drug and this is how currently the hiv uh, treatment is done uh, to keep hiv in control and this is the same interaction we are trying to simulate here so as you can see in here we part uh, we uh, define the coordinates of the each of the atoms uh, over here first is oxygen nitrogen carbon hydrogen 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 so we define all the coordinates so this is the molecular structure then here we introduce one extra carbon atom uh, with these coordinates so that it goes and attaches itself to the nitrogen atom so here what is happening this carbon atom is actually the uh, toy entry retroviral drug so this carbon atom is denoting the entry retroviral drug so what we are trying to do here is we will write a code and we will simulate this so that we see that is carbon attaches with nitrogen or not and how do we determine attaching so in molecular simulations what happens is every molecule in any state uh, any structure will be stable if it is in its lowest ground state energy if it is in high state energy it will not be stable if it is in ground state energy it will be stable similarly two molecules reacting to each other will react only if they reach a after certain amount of time they reach a ground state energy for example we bring this carbon atom uh, closer to this nitrogen uh, atom at certain point it will again uh, become go higher in energy and at certain point it will be lowest in energy so that will uh, determine that it is uh, reaching a stable state hence the entry retroviral will bind to the whole molecule so there is a whole lot of code over here and some of it is ibm kiskit some of it is penilin uh, so i will not be able to go into the whole code uh, like the line in the interest of time and it is quite complex also so i'll just give you a hint glimpse of how complex the whole thing is so we have taken uh, four electrons from the molecule that we from the toy molecule that we defined over here right and here we are building the hamiltonian out of it and here you can see these are all the observable energy functions combinations present in this molecule with just four electrons and this this shows how complex it is so and here we are mapping it to the jordan uh, using jordan wigner mapping we are mapping it to different different qubits and so here we can see there are total of 341 observables observable means the different energy function and combination present in that molecule considering only four electrons so this is how so if we take 10 electrons it will become some tens of thousands if we take 20 electrons it will go beyond lakhs observables and this is how complex it becomes that is why current classical computers are not able to uh, simulate these things but quantum computers will and we will see here itself how uh, it has been compared so i'll go back to the results that we took from this case study yeah. so here you can see the total uh, results that we took and uh, the 
uh, from the classical simulation and quantum simulation. So this whole case study is done on Rigetti's quantum computer uh, using Cascade and Penny Lane on IBM Bracket platform. So if you see in the figure that is animation is showing how the carbon atom is going to bond with the nitrogen atom and it will act as introretrovial and it will inhibit the replication uh, function of uh, this HNCH molecule which denotes a small very small part, um, toy part of HIV. So we see with six electrons we have 17, 15, uh, 1715 observables for classical uh, simulations, classical like NumPy and Gajan Solver it took 25 minutes to solve. The hardware configuration was this 32 GB 4i7. With variational quantum angle solver, it took three minutes on the Rigetti Aspen 8 GPU, which has got, uh, I think, uh, 8 or 16 logical qubits. With eight electrons, <coughs> sorry, we have 5551 observables in the Hamiltonian. Classical uh, went out of memory. I We took uh, 34 GB, 64 GB also at Core i7, but uh, it did not work out. Now we can say here that if we take uh, 10, 10 GPU machine cluster, then we can solve that. That is possible, but to keep it comparable with the to keep it comparable with the quantum computer because the quantum computer is also very small today. So to keep it comparable, there we did not increase the hardware too much because then it would become non comparable non correct comparison. Then with 10 electrons, we have 32,439 observables in the Hamiltonian. And again, in classical uh, item solver went out of memory, and we took around two hours to do that. But it finished it. Again, it was the same Rigetti Aspen quantum process. So now, I mean, we can conclude that even in this very small simulation, we saw that quantum algorithm was able to perform much better in the classical computation. Imagine the scale of chemical simulation that will be possible when we have full-scale quantum computers with thousands and millions of qubits, and this will help us unravel all the secrets of all the sciences, all the quantum world. That's about it for now. Thank you. Thank you for listening.